Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to today. I am in house clothes. Rich and I actually slept in later than normal, which late for us is sit after 6, really after 5.30 late is for us. But oh my goodness, we are getting our kitchen back put together little by little. And I am so super excited. So I'm on here today, rested after we have had our Logic coffee and our Oxy Shred drink, morning drink. And so as you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to bless you. Amen. And this is part two of yesterday's teaching, which I never really got deep into, is about industry versus inferiority with Eric Erickson's stages of development. And so we're going to go just a little deeper with that as I bring the analogy finally from the pipes into today's broadcast, and it is going to super bless you. So if you haven't watched yesterday's broadcast, hey, Miss Donna, I love you. Hey, Shoshana, I love you. So if you haven't watched yesterday's broadcast, be sure to watch it. You can see it on my YouTube channel, Table It. If you don't know what it, where it is on YouTube, message me and I will get it to you. And so today is part two of yesterday, industry versus inferiority. Good morning, Dina. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And we're going to look at it a little deeper today in relation to those pipes that are fixed. And thank you, Jesus. There is water pressure. Good morning, Dina. Hey, Ro. <clears throat> thank y'all for joining in. And Ashley. And so... Oh my goodness, y'all, I cannot tell you how just much I can breathe having counter space, and that was great, but on top of that, finally yesterday, we got water, and although we didn't get a completely new sink, we got all new accessories, <clears throat> water faucet, handles, and a sprayer. And I feel like I have got like the Mercedes, even though I'm sure it was the very cheapest that they had. But you know what? When you get something new, you just feel like rich. <laughs> Let the poor say I am rich. Amen. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Shoshana. And so we're going to look at part two of yesterday, industry versus inferiority. And so yesterday I spoke about feeling intimidated, inferior in your members. And if you do, you if you're not mindful, you can actually get into the space of trying to control others and circumstances. And God wants us to lean entirely upon him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where we lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge God and he directs our paths. Amen. And so, <clears throat> what was interesting is because we are the top apartment, five stories high, the plumber that was in here, Mr. Jerry, he is so amazing. Thank you, Miss Donna. And I actually gave a book to his wife, and she loves Mindfulness, Mind of Christ. And so, <clears throat> we were visiting again as he was doing the pipes and putting in, installing our new hardware for our sink and getting it fixed and hooking us up. And he kept saying, you have had such horrible water pressure. Now, let me just give you this analogy. I got used to it, and I thought it was great water pressure. I had no clue, and this has been going on for years. But, you know, it was what I knew. And so, we're going to look at that today with Eric Erickson's Stages of Development, Industry versus Inferiority where you can just get so settled in into the deficient places of your soul where you need the word of truth so that you can be refreshed and revived knowing who you are in Christ Jesus under the shadow of God Almighty where his identity is in and upon you, surrounding you with love and you're abounding with life like a flower that's protected with a beautiful glass. And, you know, it is. I think I cannot help but think of it, Beauty and the Beast, and how the beast was looking at the rose and the petals that would fall off of it was protected under a glass. And once the last petal fell off, he would be completely in that form, that identity. And that's kind of like a great analogy of industry versus inferiority. 
in relation to that that we feel bad. Remember that inferior place in your soul is where you're so attached unconsciously to the world, looking for your identity in others, in relationships, in jobs, in groups, in gatherings, and circumstances. And that's being exposed right now. And if you feel like, oh my goodness, you know, and all these assailings are coming to your mind, God is exposing areas in which you have had inferiority because you haven't been industrious for him. As I talk about in mindfulness, not of Christ, you have that entropy and God wants me to just show you the cover. For those that haven't seen the cover, this is mindfulness, the mind of Christ, an amazing book. And so, in that book, I talk about entropy and how entropy is chaos where it's unavailable work for use in your members. And so, those areas of deficiency are not available for the call of Christ Jesus on your life or the call of God on your life for the plan that is in heaven and is on earth loosed in your life. And, oh my goodness, you're going to see it in chapter 3, but really unpacked in chapter 6 about the keys of the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> as never before and about binding and loosing and what that really is in scripture in Hebrew and in Greek. And so in relation to areas that are in our past where there have been just uh, exchanges, relationships, where we have been influenced and have learned behavior because all behavior is learned from those relationships where we have felt inferior or just with life circumstances where we have felt inferior, those areas can cause us to not be industrious for the work of the kingdom, for the call of God on our life. So in Eric Erickson's stages of development, industry versus inferiority is from ages six to 11. During this stage, children strive to develop a sense of competence and mastery in various areas such as academics, athletics, and social skills. Successful experience give the child a sense of industry, a feeling of competence and mastery, while failure to meet industry can lead to behaviors of inferiority. And so some of these might have developed in that stage of your life, but also like me in that first marriage when I was 19 years old, there's a nap. And I was married <clears throat> for nine months at 19 years old to a very abusive man. And for those who don't know, it's in my book, God's Fire, All Healing of the Soul, Session One, The Light. And I show where I dissociated as I was severely abused in so many ways and kept a prisoner for a while and falsely imprisoned by that man and just really treated like an animal. And I had dissociated during that time. I was totally fine up until that point, but that relationship just made me feel so inferior. And so I just felt like a failure and deficient in so many areas. And God really had to heal me and bring my fragmented soul to the place where his name dwells, which I get into extensively in that book. And I'm gonna bring into the forbidden fruit, the spiritual dis-ease. And so the enemy wants to use areas where you feel like you failed, where you have these labels, identities, that you're, in de that you're deficient, you're insufficient, you're not good enough. And he wants to distract you. And he's going to do it through the mind. And he's going to bring all these messages to your mind. And it generally comes through Leviathan that sends messages to your mind. Like I mentioned a few videos ago, and you have to resist him. That's the spider's web that has adder's eggs, Isaiah 59, 4 and 5. And you've got to resist that. And you've got to look up to heaven to where your help comes from and not see yourself in that deficiency, but see who you are in Christ. Because whatever has your attention controls your intent. And so we're going to look at, as I give the analogy today, about reviving and revival and I'm going to read you one of my particular, uh, yes, particular paragraphs that I wanted to post yesterday on Facebook. But God said, 
Don't post this from your book, but he wants me to read it to you today, and I'm going to get to it in a minute. And so, in those pipes for years, when it would get clogged up, the prior maintenance guy poured industrial strength cleaner in the pipes. It ate through it, corroded it, but the pipes were already old. Holes came through, and as anything went down the sinks, it came out through the walls going down. And I think about things in our soul <clears throat> that are just behaviors that are not lovely, where we find ourselves doing what we don't want to do and not doing what we want to do, Romans 7, then it, if it's not us that's doing it, then it's that sin principle at work in our members, error and mistake of the things in which our consciousness, even if it's unconscious, <clears throat> is focused on the world from our past. If it's negative, it's of the world. And so, areas in our soul where we feel deficient, it is like those holes that are in the pipes and they're corroded. And anything in our emotions, anything in our thoughts, there is no filter. There's almost a lack of self-control like this. You're to the line where you're feeling like, oh my goodness, I just don't know if I can take this. And it's just this overwhelming sense of the enemy coming in like a flood, Isaiah 59, 10. And that's in the same thing with Leviathan, Isaiah 59, and the spider's web and the adder's eggs, divination, python, where divination and Leviathan messages to your mind to torment you and prophesying about your destiny, about what's going to happen, forecasting it. And it's all from the pit of hell. And it's coming from those corroded places in your members where you need new pipes of Psalm 42, 7, which results from Psalm 42, 1 and 2, where you're like this deer panting for the water brook as your soul pants for the face of God, even in your deficiency. You don't have to come to Him all put together. You come to Him as you are, and He puts you together. And just like the plumbers put in all new pipes, God goes to those areas of inferiority in your soul where you felt deficient, where you've been stuck, where you've been stagnant, and He puts in all new pipes where the water, rivers of the living water, eternal life in your heart, in your members can flow and refresh you. And it flows from in your inner man, in your body, Romans 12, 1, the consecrated body, and it flows up to your mind, renewing it and refreshing it. And so I'm going to get into a couple of scriptures in relation to this. And before uh, we get in, well, I'll come to my book in just a minute. But let's get into scriptures. I'm still getting used to my new computer, new, new, new kitchen stuff, new computer. I mean, I just don't know how to act. <laughs> this is all new to me. And so I'm going to look at areas in which in scripture, Psalm 42 in verses 1, 2, and 7. Scripture says, as the heart pants and longs for the water brooks. So I pant and long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold your face? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? And so we see David going through this process, and he needs new pipes. The areas in which his soul is deficient and inferior. He's the son of a concubine. He is uh, in the place of feeling like he's an outlier on the fringes and he's not in the middle where uh, he feels like he's supposed to be and looking for his identity from that space. And so he has to turn upward towards God to get his identity. And we see this in Psalm 42. These things I earnestly remember and pour myself out within me how I went slowly before the throng and led them in procession in the house of God like a bandmaster before his band, timing the steps to the sound of music and the chant of the song with a voice of shouting and praise, a throng keeping festival. 
Why are you cast down, O oh my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted in me, hope in God and wait expectantly for him? For I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. O oh my God, my life is cast down upon me, and I find the burden more than I can bear. Therefore will I earnestly remember you from the land of the Jordan River and the summits of Mount Hermon, from the little mountain Mazar, roaring deep, cries out to roaring deep, and the thunder of your water spouts, all your breakers and your rolling waves have gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and the night his song shall be with me and my prayer to the God of my life. And so we're looking at David getting new pipes, where those deficiencies in his members, where things from his past that had identified him through circumstances and others while he's in his wilderness training, are just leaking out in his behavior. You know, he was going to kill all of the males in relation to Abigail's husband. And, oh my goodness, thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. She, by the spirit of understanding, even prophesied to him about what God was going to do for him and how he was going to protect him from his enemies. And it refreshed David, and it caused him to keep his hands free of blood guiltiness and he just praised God for that. And so we see David's deficiencies of feeling like an outlier. You know, how am I going to be king when everybody's treating me so horribly? When all these circumstances are happening, when I'm in the wilderness, God, how am I going to be king? And so all the deficiencies are rising up. His pipes are corroded. All the gunk from his past is coming out in his behaviors, emotions. And so God has to give him new pipes for rivers that are roaring deep, Psalm 42, 7, to come up and refresh and revive him. And so I'm going to look at these particular name meetings, and I want to just get to this point because I feel that the Lord is going to re reveal something in this. And so Jordan means to descend. It means going low. Remember the other day when I did tribulation in Greek, the libos? And it, I talked about the limbo, how low can you go? And it's that place of humility. And he also brings in Mount Hermon, where the Hermonites are. And Hermonites mean a sanctuary. Is that not powerful? And also in the same scripture, in relation to going low, descending Jordan to descend the Hermonites, meaning sanctuary. We also see one more Hebrew word, Mitzar, which means small, little. Well, who was that? Paul the Apostle. Before he was Paul the Apostle, he was Saul. And Saul means to ask, and Paul means little, small. And so it's getting into that place where we know that in our deficiency, in our weakness, greater is Christ Jesus in us than he that is in this world. And so as we end here, I want to just read to you this paragraph from my new book, this one paragraph and just give you this little tidbit nibble until the book comes out. And so I refer to Henri Bergson. God had me read Henri Bergson's book and it's over there about time and matter. He's an 18th century philosopher, French, brilliant field opera houses just from people wanting to listen to his uh, orations and his engagements of speaking. He was a great orator. And so I'm referred to Henri Bergson where the Morphic Resonance by Rupert Sheldrake ended up being inspired as well as many other philosophers and poets and writers. Marcel Proust was one of them. Just many influences that inspired those that would come thereafter. And so I want to, I refer to Henri Bergson's book and some of his sayings, but I want to read you this paragraph in relation to what God had me write yesterday. And so I wrote, referring to Henri Bergson's viewpoint in that the body is the center image by which consciousness gives representation. And I actually am referring to the body of Christ Jesus. 
therefore, thereby manifesting our conscious reality, becoming our present. Now listen to that again, and then I'm going to read to you the very last part. Referring to Henri Bergson's viewpoint in that the body is the center image by which consciousness gives representation. So we give representation to our environment, our outside world, by our own body and what is in our members and what our soul believes about our identity. Now let me read that one more time and then I'll finish it. Referring to Henri Bergson's viewpoint in that the body is the center image by which consciousness gives representation, thereby manifesting our conscious reality, becoming our present, the pure body of Christ Jesus was filled and flooded, being the word of the kingdom of heaven, representing God. This was mankind's revival. Now, let me read that one more time. And this is in chapter 3 page 149, referring to Henri Bergson's viewpoint in that the body is the center image by which consciousness gives representation, thereby manifesting our conscious reality, becoming our present, the pure body of Christ Jesus was filled and flooded, being the word of the kingdom of heaven, representing God. This was mankind's revival. Saints, we need new pipes. We need pure pipes, a pure heart where we're not looking at ourselves. You can only love others as you love yourself in the deficient places of our soul. Because if you do, you're going to be paranoid. You're going to be looking at others and you're going to see what you don't have. And you have to behave instead of looking at what you do have in Christ Jesus in the blessings of the kingdom of the word of God in heaven. And as it is in heaven, it is on earth. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Be refreshed and don't look at your deficiencies. Look up to where your help comes from. And then Roaring Deep will cry out to Roaring Deep at the breaking forth of God's water spouts. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.